Hello everybody, today's video is going to be another product trial video. This time I'm going to try the Revlon Colorstay 2-in-1 Foundation Compact. I have tried the Colorstay Foundation in the Whipped Formula and also in the Liquid Formula, but I saw this a couple of months ago in Priceline and I thought it looked kind of, trying not to blind you, I thought it looked kind of interesting and just kind of handy that you've also got a concealer that sort of complements the shade of the foundation. So I picked this one up in uh, 180 Stand Beige. When I was trying the different sort of shades on in Priceline, I was torn between actually sort of three shades. So I've picked this one up and I kind of hope it's going to work for me, but we will soon see. So when you open up the compact, you have the concealer in a tiny little pot there first, which you can then flip up to get access to the full pan of foundation. This is a cream foundation. So I'm going to assume it's going to apply better with the sponge than a brush. And on the bottom, one more flip, you have a mirror and they also provide you with... A little sponge as well. As always with my product trial videos I'm going to try the foundation out in normal circumstances for me. So that means I will apply primer, I will apply setting spray and I will powder my face just because I want to truly test how the foundation will wear, how I will use it every single day, not just all by itself necessarily because I always use these products to help my foundation last anyway so I don't really see the point in sort of disadvantaging the products that I'm trying out. So, I have already applied the primer to my face. I'm going to apply the foundation on half my face with a sponge and the other half with a flat top kabuki brush to see which one applies it better. I am going to use the AOA Studio brushes today, the ones that I hauled in my Shop Miss A haul. I was going to do a product trial on them but I don't think I will. I think I'll just sort of use them through my makeup routine and then update you guys at the bottom of either that video or in an upcoming blog post about how I like them. Okay, so the actual foundation is quite creamy. So what I'm going to try to do with this one is I don't like the idea of dipping my sponge or my brush straight onto the pan. So I'm just going to use a clean finger first to dab it around the face and then I will use whichever side it is to actually blend it through. So as I said I am hoping this is going to be the right shade for me. So I will blend this side out with a sponge and I'll blend the other side out with my brush. It's blending out quite easily, like it's not struggling to blend out. It hasn't dried down. I mean, it was only on my skin for a couple of seconds, so it better not have dried down already, but sometimes they are quick setting. That's a fairly decent coverage for just a few swipes that you saw me put on. Like I didn't put a crap ton of product on, um, but I actually think that's quite a, a nice sort of cover, a nice sort of cover, a nice sort of coverage for, you know, first, first applying it. It's not settling in the lines around my nose because obviously I have quite bubby cheeks so it can tend to push the product into the side of my nostril where it can actually sort of settle it hasn't done that yet so it's covered a fair bit of redness in my skin just with that first layer it hasn't covered all of my spots that I have at the moment and there is a little bit of redness just here in the center of my cheek so that's one layer of the foundation on my right side with a sponge and now I'm going to do one layer on the other side using the brush so I'm going to try and put a similar amount of product on to be fair okay that actually blends in really quite well with the brush as well so that is the a similar amount of product on both sides now and I've blended both of them through I do think that the sponge side has higher coverage just because I normally actually tend to find that with sponges anyway. So I do think that the side that I've used to blend out with my damp sponge has given more coverage than the other side. Just to see how well this does build up, 
I'm going to go in with a second layer on both sides. Okay, so that is a second layer on the side with the sponge. I think it actually builds on itself really quite nicely. There's no yucky sort of clunkiness. It's not actually caking up on itself. It doesn't look cakey at all. So I'm going to try and build up the other side with the brush as well. Okay, so that's it with two layers on both sides of my face with two different application tools. I actually think it looks really quite nice. It's not cakey. It doesn't look like I've just slapped a hell of a lot of product on my face and it's not sitting well. It seems to be sinking into my skin quite nice. So I'm going to give the concealer in the compact to go as well. So I'm actually going to put the concealer to the test with my favorite under eye concealer which is just the Maybelline Age Rewind Brightening one on this side and I'm going to put the Revlon Companion Concealer on this side under my eyes because I want to test how well it sits under the eyes through the day and if it is actually going to cake up. I'm going to just use my finger again to apply the Revlon concealer underneath this eye. I don't think it's as brightening as the Maybelline one, but it is still quite brightening. I mean, it's it's not like it's a dark, you know, it's not dark by any means. So I'm going to now just spot conceal again. I'm just going to use my finger and just sort of lightly tap it where I have a spot. So that concealer actually worked really well. It is quite a high coverage concealer. So if you have like a lot of spots or anything like that, I think it spots conceals beautifully. I am going to put some powder on underneath my eyes to set both concealers, but I'm not necessarily going to bake. I'm just going to set it with my normal face powder. And then for the rest of my face, I'm just going to use a Models Prefer Flat Top Kabuki brush and just really lightly go over the rest of my face just to give it a little bit of a set. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of my face and I will be back in a second. Okay, so I have now got my full face of makeup on. I've only put blush and highlighter on over the foundation. I haven't done any contouring or bronzing, but both of them went over the foundation super, super smooth. There was no issues. It didn't catch. It didn't disrupt the foundation on underneath. So that was really nice. I have also set it down with a matte setting spray. As I said, that is just a product that I use all the time. So it is sort of a usual thing for me to do to my foundations. At this stage, I still really quite like it. So I will check back in with you at the end of the day and we will see where we're at in terms of oils or anything like that. So it is the end of the night now and I have had this foundation on for 10 hours and you can tell that I've been wearing it for 10 hours. It looks pretty bad in some places and then in other places it looks okay. So around my nose, definitely on the top of my nose, it is almost completely worn off. There's almost no product whatsoever left on my nose. And the concealer around the eye, which was this one that I applied it to underneath, it has creased quite badly and it has clumped up. Ignore my mascara that has imprinted down the bottom there, but it has creased up far more than the Maybelline one on my left eye. So that concealer, as I said before, probably isn't the best one to put on underneath your eye because it is a thick, creamy consistency. It may work a little bit better if you've baked before, not just a little bit of powder, but properly baked it for a few minutes. It may not crease, but other than that, I would suggest probably only using that concealer to spot conceal. In terms of the concealer on the rest of the face, it's held up pretty well. None of my pimples or anything like that is showing through and the foundation on my chin on the top of my mouth even on my forehead and pretty much through my cheeks it hasn't really broken down there it has managed to keep my blush and highlighter on without much problem so it's actually held up relatively well as I said I've had this on now for nearly 10 hours so it's held up pretty well and I have not touched it up at all throughout the day. So under normal circumstances, I probably would have touched it up. 
but today I haven't. So I mean, as I said, it's doing, it's holding up okay. If I were to go outside, I definitely would powder this. So I do have my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and just a fluffy brush. So I want to see how the powder goes on over the top of the product. But before I do that, I'm going to blot my face to see if any oil is there and if the blotting sheet actually lifts off any of the foundation. I don't look overly shiny, so it will be interesting to see how this actually works. So I'm just going to pat it on my forehead. Foundation has definitely come off onto the blotting sheet. So I'm going to try that on my nose as well, even though there's not much foundation left on the nose, but we'll just see. Yeah, same thing there. And a bit on my chin as well. So the foundation definitely did come off there. And now that I've blotted the excess oil, I'm just going to use my Rimmel Stay Matte Powder and just going to see if I can dust this on over the top. I don't want to add any coverage to this just because it probably will get a little bit cakey now that it has been sitting on my skin for so long. So I'm just going to basically blot it again, but with powder to see if I can take down some of the shine and maybe just sort of fix up a little bit of the coverage. So the mattifying powder definitely helped just to take out some of the shine of the skin, but it hasn't obviously added any coverage. So the coverage still looks roughly about the same. So it still is broken up a little bit on my nose, but it hasn't well, it settled, settled a little bit against my nostrils, but not too badly. And it has broken up a little bit on my forehead here. But as I said before, my pimples and most of my redness is still for the most part concealed and hidden away. So that's actually still pretty good for 10 hours wear. Normally I would wear my foundations for seven to eight hours. So I have worn it for far longer today. So I'm pretty impressed by that. Now that I've taken the shine out of it as well, if I was to go out of the house like this, I would obviously reapply my lipstick, but I would also probably go through with my MAC powder again, which has again, a little bit of coverage and just sort of dab it underneath the eyes, along the nose, and maybe a little bit on the forehead just to fill in the gaps where the foundation has broken down a little bit, and then I would be good to go. So overall, I would say this foundation is pretty good. Like, I mean, it has been on my skin, like I said, for 10 hours, so that's pretty extreme wear for me, and I think for most people that's pretty extreme to have their foundation on for so long. And it does look fairly good, so I'll be interested to see how these lights cast it through the camera lens, and if you can pick up any sort of major issues that I can't really see in the mirror. But like I said, I would be fairly happy to leave the house with this foundation as it is right now after just applying a little bit of a powder with some coverage. But yeah, either way though, guys, I think this is a pretty good foundation. If you have tried this one, let me know in the comments below what you thought. If you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.